Hello everyone, Pahamar here with the next episode of my Let's Mod series. Today's episode is going to be episode 3, and we're going to do part 1 of helpful tools and setting up your development environment. So from last time we talked about software licensing and really briefly about version control. Uh, this episode was deliberately done this way. Um, it's very easy to take a very academic approach to both topics and I really just wanted to touch on what was important for us in this series. If you'd like to learn more about version control, I know a few people really were looking for a bit more here. Please uh, feel free to look around online. Uh, there's lots of material on stuff like this and uh, if we get some good uh, links from the community, I'll be sure to post those as well. People also seem to enjoy the more freeform approach uh, of episode 2 as opposed to the more lecture, lecture-y approach from episode 1. So I will be continuing to go with uh, the more freeform approach. Today's episode uh, was originally supposed to be in a single video and I've now decided to break it up into two parts. I tried recording it earlier uh, with very... Um, I wasn't satisfied with the result. There was a lot of material and I was attempting to rush it and I feel it would be better to do this in two parts and to release both parts very shortly after each other. So today we're only going to do part one and we're going to specifically talk about the tools involved uh, with modding and what tools I like to use when modding. So let's get started. So when it comes to Minecraft modding there's two kinds of tools you need. Uh, there's the required tools and then there are optional tools. Uh, things that will help you uh, do more things better. So there's two things you, actually three things you absolutely need. You need to have the Java JDK, which is the Java development kit. You need to have the Minecraft coders pack and you need an application to write the code in. So let's explain what each of these mean a little bit more. So Java is the language, the programming language that Minecraft is written in. And if you want to do more with it, you need to write your mod in Java. Um, those who are more advanced, there's actually capabilities um, that the modding community is working on to allow you to write in other languages that support the JVM, the Java Virtual Machine. Uh, that's, uh, that's something for the future that's much more advanced, and we might cover that later in the series. So. The basics of it is is that you need to have the Java JDK installed on your system. So let's bring up the Oracle website. So Oracle is the company that makes Java. Um, Java was originally created by Sun Microsystems uh, in the 90s, a little history lesson. And about three or four years ago, Oracle purchased Sun Microsystems. So now Oracle makes it. There are two different downloads for Java. Um, generally. There's the JDK, which is for developers, the Java Development Kit, and there's the JRE, which is the Java Runtime Environment. Key difference between the two, JDK is for developers, uh, for making things, JRE is for running things, and the JDK includes the JRE. So if you're making Java applications, you only need the JDK, it'll cover you for both. So once you have that installed on your system, um, is part of the getting ready, and we'll cover a little bit of that in uh, in part two, is uh, you'll need to have the Minecraft Coders Pack. And the reason for this is, let me bring up the page here, Minecraft is written in Java, and Mojang, Mojang, both pronunciations, since that's been a topic of great discussion in the comments, they do what's known as code obfuscation. So because Java is a language that's easy to decompile, compiled code. What Mojang does is they obfuscate it, so they make it a little bit harder to see how they named things, and it's a little bit harder to understand what the classes do. So I believe it was back in the alpha, Serge and uh, several other members of the, of the community, uh, Professor Moby as being one, those are two names that uh, you may have heard before. They do play on the Forgecraft server, so you may have seen that. They started the Minecraft Coder Pack uh, project and what this does is it go looks at the obfuscated Mojang code for Minecraft and it allows them to kind of figure out what that uh, stuff is supposed to do and then we can supply our own names for that. 
So what happens is you'll you'll have your copy of Minecraft, you'll decompile it, which Minecraft Coder Pack MCP does for you. It will uh, rename things so that it's a, a human readable format for us. And then when you're ready to release your code, it will re-obfuscate all the stuff you've wrote to the versions that Minecraft knows how to read. And then you'll have a copy of your mod that works for Minecraft. Um, might not make much sense right now as I'm talking about it. We will see how to do this uh, in part two, how to uh, set up your development environment, how to decompile with MCP for the first time, and what the difference of the code looks like. So we'll touch on that. The next thing that you absolutely do require for any kind of development is something to write the code in. Contrary to what a lot of people tend to believe, you don't need a fancy editor to do this. To write code, at the very least, what you need is a text editor. You could quite feasibly write a Minecraft mod in Notepad, or in VI, or WordPad. All you need is something to actually write text down in, because that's all code is, it's just text. It certainly helps to have some of the more advanced tools, like a development environment, an IDE, an integrated development environment. And we will be using a IDE, we'll be using Eclipse in this series. Uh, that's my IDE of choice, so we'll be going with that. But you uh, should by no means feel obligated to it. Uh, the code we will write uh, will work if you were to have written it in Notepad or whatever. So those are the three things you absolutely require when it comes to making mods. You need the Java JDK, you'll need the Minecraft coders back, and something to write the code in. Now we can start talking about some additional things when it comes to making mods. So I didn't list um, Minecraft Forge as a required tool because really you do not require Minecraft Forge to make a mod for Minecraft. We will be using it as part of the series, but it's definitely not required. And LexManos uh, is probably going to give me a bit of grief for listing it as an API, but it kind of falls in that category. So an API is an application programming interface. Uh, it's basically generally a layer that gives more functionality to a developer. So Minecraft Forge is um, more accurately a compatibility layer between mods and Minecraft. So Forge started out originally as a way of collectively including a number of common edits to the vanilla code so that uh, mod A wouldn't make a modification to a vanilla class and then mod B did a something slightly different in that class. And because they were two different versions at the end of the day of that original class, the mods were not compatible. So Minecraft Forge was designed to kind of, hey everyone, let's merge in our common base edits and then we'll have something that works together with everything. So that was that's the goal of Minecraft Forge. And more um, functionality has been added over time. Uh, we get uh, better capabilities. We've now also got uh, our own mod loader, the Forge mod loader, built into it as well. So there's various other APIs um, I'm not listing here. Um, anyone can write an API. Uh, a lot of mods have their own APIs for interfacing with that particular mod. But uh, for this series to start, we'll just be using Minecraft Forge. So I kind of touched on IDEs a little bit, talking about. Um, what kind of application you need to write code in. Uh, so since I kind of explained it already, I'll just gloss over that yes, and we will be using Eclipse in this. Uh, it's got a lot of nice features that you'll be able to see as we're working through this. So uh, yeah. When it comes to version control in uh, episode two, I said that we would be using Git as our uh, version control system. Specifically, the application that I like to use is called SmartGit. Uh, it is a Windows only application, which is one of the few um, tools that I'm going to recommend here that's Windows only. There are a multitude of Git client uh, applications to make your uh, Git versioning a lot easier. By no means do you need something, um, a fancy application for it. Git at its base level can be done just straight from the command line once it's installed. Um, Smart Git for Windows kind of handles things a lot easier uh, for most people. Uh, there's also Tortoise Git, which is a Windows-only application. 
Uh, and there's a couple other ones for Linux and Mac. Um, I'm not particularly aware of any really uh, good ones that I can recommend. So if anyone knows any good Linux or Mac um, Git applications that really make things easier for the user as opposed to just straight up command line, uh, feel free to tell me in the comments and I'll have a look and if it's good I'll link it. The other thing uh, that's nice to have as a developer is a tool to do automated builds. Now a build is basically um, scripting the manual process of putting together an application. Like, So I have my code, I want to release it. A build tool will, mo will automate all the manual steps of getting it from base code, just straight up text, to something that can be executed. Uh, Apache has uh, uh, an application called Ant. Um, Ant is basically just a scripting utility. Uh, it's something I like to have uh, around. There's other different ways of doing build tools out there. There's Maven is another tool. Uh, in this series you'll see me using Ant scripts to automate the builds of, uh, of software. Um, Ant once again is a, uh, a command line utility. There's not really a nice uh, interface for this. Eclipse does have some nice ways of doing Ant scripts. Um, but it's very, very basic. You don't really need a lot, and uh, we'll touch on it a little bit throughout the series. You're also going to want some kind of image editing software. Um, I'm going to recommend GIMP in this uh, in this series. You could use Paint. Uh, you could use Photoshop. GIMP is very similar in feature set to Photoshop, um, with the added advantage of it's free, and it works on all systems. It's open source software, so it works on Windows, works on Mac, works on Linux, might even work on your phone, who knows. Modeling is something that you don't necessarily need uh, when it comes to Minecraft modding. Uh, modeling really comes into if you want to get into fancier stuff, um, you want to come up with your own renderers for your fancy tile entities, we'll talk about that later, we'll see that, I'll show you how to do tile entities and how to do special renders for it. Um, Techna, Techni, is written by uh, two other members of the MCP team that we talked about earlier. And it's meant to make it easier to do modeling for Minecraft and to get those models from their application Techna into Minecraft. They'll actually allow you to export the code, uh, export the texture files for it. It makes it really easy. So we'll, we'll look at that a little bit. Uh, if you're more advanced in graphics, uh, you can use open source applications like Blender or uh, proprietary software like uh, 3D Max. Um, there's another one out there that I'm forgetting right now uh, to create uh, files that you can then write your own custom importers into Minecraft and get really fancy graphics. Um, XYCraft does that, for example, in uh, stuff you haven't seen yet, but you will. Uh, it looks really nice. So the more advanced modeling, uh, definitely the more advanced the code is to get it to work. Techna is a good starting point. Other things you'll want is um, sound editing. So if you want to do custom sounds for your mod, uh, you're going to want some kind of software to record and edit those sounds. Uh, I happen to use Audacity, which is a, once again, you can probably guess, free and open source application, works on multiple uh, systems. As a matter of fact, I can drag it in. I'm recording the audio track for this right now on it. So you can actually see it in action right this moment. Very, very nice and easy to use application. Definitely recommend it. I also recommend, um, highly recommend getting yourself uh, into IRC to the various channels where Minecraft modders uh, frequent. Uh, I touched on that in episode one. It's really good to hang out in these channels, even if you don't say anything, if you just idle. Um, you'll see other people discussing problems, and you might find them discussing things that you yourself want to do in the future, you yourself are doing right now, or you've done in the past, and maybe it's a new approach, it's a better approach. So highly recommend getting into IRC. And a free piece of software for that is HexChat. It's a fork from the older X chat. Um, I've been using it for a number of months now. Uh, I believe it's available for all operating systems. I know it's definitely available for Windows, so definitely recommend that. There we go. All right. 
So this episode pretty much just touched on the tools that we'll be using as part of this series. Uh, the second part of this, which should be followed shortly after this, will actually go through how to set up your development environment and specifically I'll be showing you how I like to set up my own environments and why I like to do it that way. Um, I'll explain that uh, you could go with a very easy environment. As a matter of fact, MCP and Forge comes with a version of an Eclipse workspace, a kind of a workbench to work on, um, right out of the box. Or uh, you could do what I do, which I'll show you what I do. I'll show you both approaches, as a matter of fact, of uh, how I like to set up my own environment and why I do it that way. So it shouldn't take too long, maybe half an hour. And part of the reason why I'm doing this in two videos, because the first one just, it took too long. So once again, uh, I appreciate all the all the comments, uh, all the helpful suggestions and everything and all the questions. Uh, if you could follow me on Twitter, subscribe, like, favorite me on YouTube, and definitely be sure to visit my website, pomar.com, where I post a lot of uh, teasers for mods I'm working on. I post everything related to the series on there. And I have a lot of links. I've got a link section up now to a lot of other modders' development pages, their blogs, uh, a lot of other tutorial sites and everything. And I'll start adding links to all the downloads for the tools we discussed today on that website. But you'll also be able to find them in the description of this YouTube video. So once again, uh, thanks for hanging out with me. And uh, we'll see you in part two of episode three, setting up your development environment. So thank you again, and take it easy.